Lord. Amen. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Nobody greater Lord. than the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Please turn your Bibles to Galatians chapter 2. We're going to be focusing on one verse. And I think this verse has been misunderstood. I think people look at this verse as being just for the Apostle Paul. Uh, but Apostle Paul was mightily used by God. Matter of fact, he was called by God. Amen. Uh, Acts chapter 9, where he had told uh, Ananias, he said, Look, I've chosen Paul as a, as a vessel, as a chosen vessel to me, that he will suffer many things for my sake. You know, Paul was on his, on his way to Damascus Road to destroy and to kill some Christians. Mm -hmm. But God had other plans, just like he had other plans for us. Yeah, and he changed us around. But this particular subject today is something I think a lot of us need to really take heart because, you know, I asked the Lord to, Lord to lead me in a way and, and, and give me information even for myself and also for all of us um, how to get over the hump, how to move forward. And I think uh, sometimes that this particular subject is something that it, it relates to all of us. Amen. So today's title is, Have You Let Go Yet? Have You Let Go Yet? Amen. In this one particular verse, and I'm going to try to just use this whole message for this verse and explain it to us, and the Spirit is going to explain to us what it really means. And once we understand this, I believe that your life will be a whole lot better. You'll be able to understand and see things and stop relying on yourself. Because a lot of us still do that. We have not let go of us. Amen. You know, we can do it. We can fix it. We can't do nothing, y'all. Amen. The Bible says we can't do nothing without Him. So here in this verse, it says in verse 20, in Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, it says, Paul says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. It's a whole lot of stuff in this, and we're going to take our time and, and dissect this, because he's saying a lot here. In the Living Bible, I want to read the Living Bible translation. This says, I have been crucified with Christ. And I myself no longer live, but Christ lives in me. In the real life I now have within this body is a result of my, of, of, of my trusting in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Amen. Amen. Uh, when will the will of God for our personal lives come clear to us. We know when God saved us, he, he had a special will. He had a, something for us to do. He saved us, his children. It was something, a mark we had to leave on this earth before we go home. And it was a will that he gave each and every one of us. Sad to say, a lot of us still don't know what that is. We're still caught up in little things that, uh, uh, little habits or things that kind of hinder us. Because we're not looking at it from a, a, the right perspective. We're looking at it from our understanding. We don't say that, you know, because the Bible says don't need no understanding. But we still do that. Amen. But here, this verse is going to kind of hopefully open it up to you because, you know, if you say you have God's Spirit, that's the, that's the starting point, that you have His Spirit. And that's the blessed point right there, that you have His Spirit. But many spend most of their lives not understanding or knowing God's will for their lives. Amen. Because many don't really understand this one particular verse. So, we have to realize and understand what it means. So let's go into this. Paul says, I am crucified with Christ. This here is talking about yielding. You know, the word, we know what crucified means. It means when Christ was crucified on the cross and nails in his hands or his wrists or his feet. That was the way that they punished people back in the day. But here he's talking about the test where we've been crucified, meaning that just like Christ continually, daily, didn't carry out his will, but he carried out the Father's will. Remember the God God said to me, Father, not thy will, but your will be done. So every day we have to 
make a, a living sacrifice of what we want to do and really focus on, God, what you want me to do. Now, see, a lot of us, that, that's not part of our prayer every day. One of the things that we see part of our prayer is to be that people who should say, well, you should never say this. Uh, we pray for something that we say, if, Lord, if it's not, you know, not my will, but your will be done. But that's the correct thing to do. Because what you're doing is you're yielding what you want to do. You're saying, well, God, because it's going to, he's going to get his way anyway. Amen. Even though it might take us years for it to be manifested because the whole time we've been doing our own thing. Jesus. You see, God's going to get his way. He, he, he's going to get his way regardless. We can't, we can't speed him up. We can't slow him down. Amen? Amen. He says, I've been crucified with Christ. we got to understand one thing first. We have to know that Christ is in us. We have to know that Christ is in us. 2 Corinthians chapter 13, 5 says this. It says, examine yourselves whether you be of the faith, in the faith. Right? Watch. Prove your own selves. Know ye not that your own selves know that Jesus Christ is in you, that ye be reprobates. So in other words, if we're living and we accept the Christ, but we haven't per se moved out yet, if we're still on, our, on the throne in our life, and having realized, look at the next person here, where it says, Nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. That's a profound statement. Because to understand that Christ lives in me. I mean, if the believer today doesn't see this, and how important this is to realize this, he says, Nevertheless I live, yet not I. In other words, we're living, we're alive, but we're no longer leaning on our understanding. Amen. We're no longer trusting how things are going to work out. We're going to believe God every day regardless. I heard you in your prayer when you said, Joe, when I go to this meeting, Lord, control my tongue. Don't let anger or pride jump out. I need you to take over. See, these are the kind of prayers that God's honor. Because even though in that meeting something might jump off where... The, the, the enemy will try to cause your blood pressure to rise up because you might not like what they're saying, right? And all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit will come and say, Joe, remember this. You asked me to give you peace. Amen. Remember when Jesus in Isaiah chapter 53, when he was being beaten and, and, and scorns and everything else, he said he opened out his mouth. Amen, amen, amen. <laughs> the Bible says, be slow to, uh, slow to speak and swift to hear. Amen. This is important. You know, this whole part about I've been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, nevertheless, he says, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. Look, the Bible tells us to, to die to self. But watch this now. But yet, many of us frequently attempt suicide. Other words, I'm not saying physical suicide, but we attempt to say, because we say to ourselves, how many times have you noticed people make these uh, resolutions every year? I'm going to get in shape, I'm going to stop eating this, I'm going to do that. That might last to uh, February. Mm -hmm. But see, a lot of us make these daily resolutions. You, you might hear a sermon, you know, and the spirit is really heavy on you. You're going to say, well, you know, I, I, uh, I really need to change some things. But we don't really, what, what transpires after we leave here, all the activity in the spiritual realm is pulling us back to that comfort spot where we, we are resting in our morals and our understanding than having faith in God. We've got to understand this verse because this is the difference between so many people having victories in their life and not having victories. Some of us just give up and say, well, you know, it's not going to work. But we're going to look at some things because we need to realize how important it is. There's no longer I who live. Once we understand that, see it from God's perspective, I'm telling you, hmm. your walk will become a whole lot clearer. Let's continue on here. Amen? So a, freak, a lot of us frequently commit a, 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 a suicide, yet many times we still live. Often we, we appear to be dead to our ideas, but then they're resurrected. Amen? 
We attempt to crucify ourselves, but we fail to die. Amen? So what's the problem? The problem is this. Watch this. Go back up to this verse. Mm. The problem is we can't live this life in our own strength. If we've been crucified with Christ by faith, he, he, he died. We was baptized into him, into his death. So when he rose, we rose. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? So there's no longer I who live, but Christ who lived in me. When we, when, you know, when we look in the mirror, you know, we see ourselves, but when we tackle these things in our life, we got to get off of us and say, Lord, I can't do this. I will never be able to do this. I can't walk this walk. I can't live this life. That's when God begins to move. Because he said, you can't do nothing without me. But you know what? We sure enough trying. We sure enough trying to do something. Lord, I got this, but it, it will never, ever work. Amen? Amen? Listen, we cannot repair or improve ourselves. Lord, I'm going to do better. No, you're not. Not without the strength of the Lord. See, the Lord allows things that happen in our life to convince us, to, to, to convince us of our inabilities. That's why a lot of us are trying this and I'm going to stop this, I'm going to put this habit down, but you can't do it. Because He's allowing you to see that it's, you, you're, it's, you, you can't do it. See, when, when you die, if we, he says, you die to self, all right, that means he don't need our help. Amen. I don't need you to do this. All you that labor, heavy laden, come unto me and I give you rest. Because we've been laboring, trying to fix stuff, trying to straighten things out. God, I'm going to do better. Don't make these promises you can't keep. I've been made so many promises. Said, come on, right? you again. You're not going to be able to do this until you're empowered by the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Oh, look at this. I'll, I'll stay there. I, I just read it for you. It's Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. Uh, uh, I'm going to read 16 first in Ephesians chapter 3. And it says this. Mm, powerful passage of Scripture. It says, Ephesians 3, 16. Come on, page. Because I don't want to open up here. It says here, that he will grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. Look at verse 20. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. See, it's unto him. It ain't unto me and you. He can do it. See, listen. According to the power that works in us. See, once we understand this, uh, uh, the presence of the Holy Spirit in us, in the person of Christ Jesus, in us, amen, once we understand that, we're able to do above and beyond all that we ask or think. Amen. According to the power that works in us. See, it's almost like, we got to realize this. This is not us changing our lives. It's about us making an exchange for our lives. Amen. Putting down our life and picking up His life. Pick up your cross and follow him. Now he didn't say pick up your cross and just go what you're going. You go with the way you want to go. You gotta follow him. Amen. And so many people think I gotta change this, I gotta change that. No, you gotta make an exchange. Accept him as your savior. And I got a, a key point here. Look at uh, um, listen to this. Many will many will make promises to God that they can't keep. Pick me so many promises. Week after week, God, I'm going to do better. You know, we say it subconsciously in our mind, don't we? We're going to do better. Amen. And it never happens. Amen. Because we can't do better. We can't do it. We're dead to ourself. Amen. But we're alive in Him. He said, no longer I who live, but Christ who live in me. Yes. You see? we got to recognize that He's in us. That verse I read there in 2 Corinthians chapter 13, 5, where He says, you know, unless you uh, uh, um, realize and examine yourself whether you be of the faith and realize that Christ is in you. Because if you don't realize He's in you, everything is hypocritical. You're doing this stuff on your own. You're trying to work out things on your own. You need the power of God. 
That's why some of the things that we are going through in our lives, presently right now, seems to not go away. There seems to be no victory. Because he's keep telling you, get out of the way. <laughs> Cast all your care upon me because I care for you. He didn't say some care. you got to give all to everything because you can't do it. We can't do nothing without him. And see, once we see that, you talk about peace, man. Jesus. Peace. I realize the more and more of my life, you know, if you, we can't be fooled by our feelings. For, forget feelings. We got to go by what we know. And what we know is the fact of the Word of God that we can do all things through Christ. Listen, Amen. who strengthened us. Yeah. It is that we can do all things and leave it there. He has to strengthen us in our inner man. Oh, y'all hear me today. Look at Romans chapter 7. Go back to Romans chapter, well, over to Romans 7. And look at this. See, when it talks about in Romans 6, let me go over here to Romans 6 where it says here. Look at verse Romans 6, 14. It says, uh, I guess I can start from uh, um, 12. It says, it says, Let not sin therefore reign in your moral bodies, that ye should obey it to the lust thereof. Now, has that been possible? <laughs> All right? This is a fact, what he's saying here. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal bodies, that ye should obey it to the lust thereof. Neither yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as though that, that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. Now watch this. For sin shall not have dominion over you. For ye are not under the law, but under grace. Now you and I know certain sins that have dominion over us. Amen. We know that, right? Amen. We know that for a fact. Look at verse 16. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves to obey, your servants ye are to whom you obey, whether sin unto death or the obedience unto Christ. So he's making an example here. He's saying, Know ye not that to whom you yourselves Service to obey. Either we're going to obey God or we're going to obey ourselves. But watch this, 17. But God be thanked that you were servants of sin. See? But ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine or teaching which was delivered to. That's why we got to get the word. That's why we got to hear the word. Because that form of doctrine, that form of teaching, Amen. It's going to help us obey and help us understand like we're talking about today. Go back over to Galatians. We're talking about today. We're talking about it's no longer I who live. Christ, he said, I've been crucified. Amen. I've been crucified. It's no longer I who live, but Christ who lived in me. Let's finish reading this. In the life, now here's the point. In the life, that's everyday life. Amen. Not just on Sundays, on Tuesdays or whatever. Amen. It's every day. He says, mm -hmm. Amen. It says, now, I, now, now, which I live in the flesh, I live, no, I'm, I'm saying that again, in the life which I now live in the flesh, right now, right now, tomorrow down the road, amen, I live by the faith of the Son of God. There's no, there's no uh, 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 pit stop we take from that. That's an everyday daily thing. Lord, give us this day our daily bread. Well, yeah, I noticed about it last week and all the day. Yesterday, you didn't want my bread. I was trying to lead you and guide you with my Holy Spirit, but you didn't want it. You want to go ahead and do your own thing. I'm not going to force you. See, God cannot make us believe something that we don't want to believe. Mm -hmm. Because we believers. He's not going to say, all right, you know, you're not going to believe that? Well, stay right there. Because you're not going to move. we got to see it for ourselves that, you know, that old man, that old you, is dead. Even sometimes we feel comfortable, and we, we're used to it, and we're familiar with that old person. But you and I know now, he, he, he used to get us in a lot of trouble. Amen. Yes, the way we, used to, we respond to different situations, and we can't, we, we're, we're moving farther and farther away from that guy. Come on now. Amen. That's that battle about the flesh and the spirit, us against one another. 
And as we grow, that's why the Bible says, grow in Christ. Desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. And that's what we're doing. We got the week. We're coming here. We're growing. We're getting stronger. But anytime we take the hiatus of taking our, you know, taking time off and not really putting God first every day, what's going to happen is we're diminishing and we're actually grieving the Holy Spirit. So we can't really can't hear him anymore. His voice becomes dull to us. So now we're being deceived because the Bible tells us in 1 Timothy chapter 4, it tells us, In the latter days the Spirit speaks expressly that in the last days some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. So when you're not around this word, guess what? Demons are seducing you. They're seducing you. You don't see them, but they're coming at you through thought, to your eye gates, to your ear gates. Man, they busy, man. They are busy. I actually seen with my naked eye. Amen. And I never been had clothes on it, but my naked eye. I've actually seen spirits actually control people in a way where they have no idea what just happened. Jesus. They have no idea what just happened. You can see the influence because that's why just to take no thought. These thoughts are, you can just see people change their look or change their uh, 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 attitude. Like, well, what happened? Where'd that come from? Oh, God. I actually seen an enemy, uh, uh, I mean, just, if he could get a foothold on us in our personal lives, he's going to keep on picking up that same foothold, that same door because he knows that that door works. Yeah. You can progress over here in the Lord, but he knows I'm, he's going to resort back to some old things. Well, I know this is going to get him. Not until we receive light from the word of God to say that's the way he's been coming. I got to close that door. Mm. Amen. 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 Oh, he's been, he been having 6,000 some odd years. Mm. He knows how to get us. Mm. He knows each and every all weaknesses, man. He knows that thing that causes us either to be fear or some type of anxiety, which is all because they are related, or some kind of habit. He knows what door to knock on. He knows what door to knock on. When the Lord told, I think it was Cain, uh, when Cain got jealous of his brother Abel for the sacrifice, and he, the Lord didn't accept his, uh, the Lord said, why are, you, why are you doing this to your brother? And then he said to him, Sin, uh, Genesis 4, sin life at the door. Meaning, you know, Satan knocking. Just like the Lord's knocking. Satan, he's knocking, he's trying to get in. He can't make us do anything anyway. Mm. We're drawn away by our own lust. And then we become trapped. Jeez. Amen. And then sin brings forth death. Yeah. Amen. So remember, we got to understand that Christ is in us. And when you, when you become more familiar with him, a lot of these things you're going through ain't nothing. <laughs> Have you ever worried about something? <laughs> to the point where it consumed your thought. You could be talking to somebody, but you're worrying about something over here. And you say, huh? I'm over Huh? You still over there. Come on, somebody. I'm talking truth now. Yes. Well, you have to be aware, and when, when, when the Holy Spirit is, when we move by faith, because you, look at this last part of this verse here. He says, now which now I now in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. See, faith is the key. Faith is the key. That's that uh, Genesis, I mean, Galatians chapter 2, 20. He says, now I live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. Now, I know I was reading Romans, but I'm going back over there. Okay. Um, we got to realize, oh, this is, this is a faith walk. Amen. The just, just justified, of those that made right, shall what? Live by faith. Walk by faith. No, there's no other way. It tells us in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8, we are saved by grace through faith. See, this is the new day right here. But tomorrow, I got I to gotta do the same thing by faith. I got to believe the day, and I got to believe tomorrow, and I got to believe down the road. Ain't no one time believing. I seen folk coming here, and they give their heart to the Lord, so to speak, and they cry, and they moan, and all this, and, and they weep. You don't see them no more. 
if the Lord really made a transformation in somebody's life, you ain't got nowhere else to go. If He truly transformed you from the inside out, hey, <laughs> you want this because this is what you eat now. This is the manna from heaven. This is the this is this is the food. This is the food that you need. You know now the food they got here now ain't even food for them people to eat anymore. <laughs> what, what they doing to all the food? But look over, go back over to, well, go to Romans uh, 7. Y'all with me here? Amen. I'm trying to uh, help you see some things because you do have an opposition. The Lord, the enemy does not want us to realize that Christ is in us. He don't want us to know. Because once we really see that, those thoughts that come to your mind that cause you to worry, immediately the Holy Spirit will say, hey, don't worry about that. I had a situation just recently, and I didn't think that God was getting back with me in a, in a timely of, of matter because I think he wanted to bail out and not do the job. So my thought pattern went off like, well, why would he want to do that? I want to give him the job, but he don't feel like he wants the job. But I stopped worrying about it. Just go ahead and do what you got to do. Mm -hmm. Got a message uh, uh, yesterday, and he, you know, kept to what he told me he was going to do. But see, a lot of us don't have enough patience when people, things are not moving the way we want them to move. Well, who do we think we are? In due season, you shall reap if you faint not. See, so this is God's timetable, not ours. You know, you, the world today are impatient. They're impatient. All around, people just rushing, they ain't going nowhere. Trying to get the things done, they ain't going nowhere. But here in Romans 7, look at Romans 7. So Romans 6 is like, an, it's like a fact. That we've been crucified with Christ. But in Romans 6, through Romans 7, it tells us this. Amen. It tells us, amen. Um, and look at verse 18. Especially the last part of this. He says, For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, draweth no good thing. Here it is. For to will is present with me. Now Paul's talking. He says, For to will is present with me. Y'all can take your time. Now look at this. I'll say it again. For to will is present with me. What is that will that's present? It is the Holy Spirit. I can perform it, but he says, but how to perform that which is, which is good? I find not. It ain't up to us to find out how to do it. It's up to God. Y'all see that? Let me say it again. For to will is present with me. That will is the presence of the Holy Spirit. He can perform it. But how to perform that which is good, I find not. See, if we start trying to figure out how things are going to work out, it ain't in us. It's in Christ that's in us. Greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. See, we have to, listen, I'll keep saying over and over again, you got to realize that it's not, a, it's not nothing that we can change. We're trying to change to be better, that God can accept us. No, we just got to accept, and, uh, accept the exchange of His life for our life. That's it. That's the bottom line. It's like here, the great exchange. Lord, here's my life. You give me your life. I give you my life. You see? He died for us. If we die in our sins, what's the penalty? Death. That's the penalty. But he took the sins of the whole world upon himself for me and you. We keep taking them back. We keep letting our own understanding. You know, our prayers are a little, our prayers are to be, God, I don't know how to do this. I ain't think about how to do this. I don't never want to know how to do this. You got to do it. Amen. See, some people don't like to look at themselves. It's almost like, you know, it's a it's a teaching out here now in a lot of these churches that people don't feel as though, you know, we sing the song, I surrender all. But a lot of folks don't feel they need to surrender. Well, let me tell you something, you won't get far in God if you don't surrender. Mm -hmm. All. Because it ain't me no more. It ain't you no more. It's Christ in me. And Christ in you. And we're going to look at some scriptures where Jesus said this so many times. 
And it's important that we understand it because your life will not change for what it is if you don't realize every day when you get up, Lord, have your way. Amen. That takes so much pressure off of you and me. Because worry, the first thing we try to we get up, I got to do this, I got to do this, I got to take care of this. Look, man, keep your mind on Jesus. And you realize at the end of the day, things work this way out. Things is just start. Look at that. You know, the enemy wants to come and steal our joy, our peace. And he does this by, you know, us having us focus on, you know, we got to do something. We got to fix something. We got to, no, we, it can't, we can't make it happen. It's no longer I who live, but Christ who lived with me. The life that I now live in this flesh, in this body, the life I live now, I live by the faith of the Son of God. So I, what that tells me and you, my faith, my attention, all my ability has to be on, Lord, what you want. Work through me. Work in me. Psalms 51, 6. David is sinned against Bathsheba. And he said, Lord, you desire truth in the innermost parts. See, once we get truth in the very innermost parts, what's that? That's your spirit. That's the new you. Once you get truth there, you're on your way. Not up here, but in your spirit. People were telling me all day about, you know, with all this stuff that's going on in the world and, you know, all these demonic things that's going on with people talking about trying to poison us and trying to do this through the vaccines and what, how the Satan... Look, I don't care what he's trying to do. I don't care what he's trying to put into things that cause people to go away with. Let me tell you something. You can't put nothing in no spirit. <laughs> can't do it. We're new creatures, man. Thank you. If you can uh, 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 inflict things... It caused my body to be all out of whack. But the Lord is controlling my death and your death. Yeah. He says, if the point of the man wants to die, he has an appointment. They can't change that appointment. Yes. Can't change that appointment. Yes. Come on. God has got it in stone. We're going to leave here. Jesus. So why are we worrying about, oh, you're going to catch this? Look, God knows when you're leaving here. If people always say, well, that wouldn't happen, they wouldn't, have, they wouldn't have died. You know what? It didn't happen. It was time for them to go, and they ain't here. You see anybody ever change that around? It does not happen. So we got to understand that. So he's saying here in that, in that Romans 7, verse 18, part B, but how to perform it, that which I, I find not. Look at that. For the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. Amen. Any witnesses? Amen. There he is. says, now it is I, listen, now watch this. Now if I do that, I would not, it is no more I that do it, but sin, but sin that dwelleth in me. Huh. And that second eye he's talking about, that, that he's seeing now. He's seeing it ain't him. He's seeing that it's a part of him, that sin in him, that's causing him to go wayward. Watch this. I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. But then he says here, for I delight, that means... But turns you one the most. For I delight in the law of God. Look where? After the inward man. <laughs> Second Corinthians 4, 16 tells us, though, though our outward man perish, our inward man is renewed day by day. See, that's our responsibility. See, Satan wants to take some time off. And the more time we take off, he's deceiving us with thoughts, you get away from this thing, and next thing you know, how did I get over here? Amen. I was delivered from that. Jesus. And that's when the mother of seven spirits come in, you worse than you was in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Man, he got a diabolical plan. He don't want us to grow. He wants us to stay uh, in a, a re spiritually retarded in a sense where we can't receive the blessings of God and where the Holy Spirit can't work through us to do God's will Jesus. on this earth. Mm -hmm. So we got to realize we've been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, we don't live. Yet not I, but Christ will live in me. Now watch this. Look at the next verse of that Romans chapter 7. It says, 23. For I see another, you got to see this. We got to see it. For I see another law of my members, warring against the law of my mind. That's how I was talking about. It's, it's, see, you know, even though we, we made a point, it's a fact that Christ is no longer I who live, but Christ will live in me. Look, it's activity going on. It's members warned against the law of my mind. See, what are these members? Eye gates, mm -hmm. ear gates. Come on, somebody. Mm -hmm. Lust of the flesh and lust of the eyes. These are these things that are saying, 
Yo, man, what's up? You forget about me. Amen? He says, look, and we'll look what it does. It's bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. Psalms 101, 3 says this. I will put no evil thing before my eye. People who are hooked on pornography go deeper and deeper to the point where now they are become molesters and, and creeps and, and a chest of them of molesters. <laughs> they become weirdo to the point where that habit takes over them. It was a, it was a show on Channel 6 where the, the guy, the, you know, these guys would call up, the girl would, they would stage that they were 12, 13 years old. And they call them up and say, well, she said, tell them to come on over. And when they get there, that guy who runs the show will come out the back door. Y'all seen that show? Yeah. And they say, well, what are you doing here? She's only 12 years old. Well, we were just going to just talk. No, you wasn't. You're a weirdo. What are you doing this? And then they try to take off a run, but then you got all the security outside waiting for them. And they say, well, don't tell my wife. Don't tell my job. Come on, man. But see, these are the things that people are not aware of, how the enemy deceives us, because we're, no, we're, we're walking out the flesh. That's why he says, that's why that, Galatians 2 says, uh, um, the life that I now live in this flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. In other words, if I live by my flesh's voice, he's going to get me in trouble. He's going to have me doing all kinds of stuff, and it's like, oh, man, I can't live like this. I've been, I've been reborn. I've been born again. Amen. That was a born of flesh and flesh, and that was a born of spirit and spirit. We got a new life now. We got a new, we're new creatures in Christ. Listen, old things pass away. Behold, new things come. And verse 18 of 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 18 says this, and the new things are of God, indicating that, you know, for us to live every day, we got to keep hearing God. Because we don't keep hearing God, guess what? Satan's going to step in. You don't keep hearing me because I want to kill, I want to rob, and I want to destroy you. This is fact. This is fact. You get to the point you realize you ain't, it's Christ in me. Every time you text your mind, Christ, you in me. Take charge. You answer for me. That's why he told his disciples, don't worry about what you're going to say in that hour. What hour could that be? When Satan's trying to deceive me and pull me over here. Lord, I, I, can't, I can't worry about what I'm going to say. You speak for me. And once you realize that power that's within you, you'll be, so, be amazed. Wow. God's a good God. Amen. See, there's so many victories that we have, uh, uh, we, we should have had. But we can't cry over spilled milk. So many victories we didn't have in our life, you know. But now as we go forward, if we realize every day Christ is in me. See, we know, we, all of us know our inabilities, or some of them. But a lot of us are, are, need to realize Christ's ability in us. If he said, I can do all things, let him do them. <laughs> let him do them. You know, and, and if he says, my God will supply all of my needs. Let him do them. According to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Let him do it. It's according to him. It ain't according to me and you. My God will supply. He said will supply all my needs. He can do above and beyond all what I ask or think according to the power that works in me. Let that power work. Acts chapter 1, verse 8 says, when you receive the Holy Ghost, you're going to receive power, man. Man, we've got to activate that spirit of God in us. Because I'm telling you, that's the only thing that's going to get us through here, in this life right here. Because there's another spirit out here, and that spirit is the Antichrist, and, he's, and there's many false prophets out here, y'all. And they, they attack it. Some people are, man, they, they are bound for destruction and don't even know it. But God don't lie because he said broad is the way. We ought to be blessed and be happy that we're on that narrow road. And we don't want the few he'll find it. But we ought to take more advantage of Christ living in us and the strength that we have. I'm telling you. It's a, it's a, it's a miracle. You could be in a conversation with somebody. And you ain't said a word. 
and the Lord then told you everything about what's going on, what their motive is, what their purpose is, then you just kindly say no thanks because you're a liar. You know, let me let me get back over here. Y'all y'all here? Y'all here now? Yeah. Listen. Mm. Let me read this to you. God tells us that we are worthy of death. We are useless. We will never please God unless we move out. Watch this. Our prayer should be, Lord, if it be your will. Lord, I want it to be your will. I want it to be your will. Help us realize it's impossible to please God without faith. Now remember Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. It says, without faith, it's impossible to please God. First, you must believe that he is, that he's God. Listen, and he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. That, that's the whole thing about, you know, think about it. He's our Lord now. I, all my allegiance to him. It's not just, you know, I think the Lord gets kind of upset when we, you know, only call him when it's dire straits. But he wants us to realize you're going to need me every second of the day. Every minute and every hour. And see, that's when, that's when your love is going to increase. That's when the unnecessary things that you're going through right now will be diminished and be demolished when you realize God is in me. I can do all things. I'm going to allow him to strengthen me. I'm going to allow him to do this thing in me. That's why Paul, when he was preaching in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, he says uh, to those people, he was there before they didn't believe him, he says, uh, uh, I didn't come with you in a demonstration, I didn't come with you with a uh, uh, man's wisdom, but I come with you in a demonstration of the power of the Holy Spirit. You know, I, I, I want you to not look at me, but look at the Spirit in me, you see. Look at the power in me, because the power is in me, that's also in you too. Mm -hmm. Praise God, Amen. Praise God. Listen, now what if I said this to y'all? What if I told you you are corrupt to the core? Some of you say, I beg your pardon. If I say this to certain other, some certain other people, they say your mama. <laughs> right? But listen, we gotta realize that when when we can say it to ourselves, I am rotten to the core. That's when you realize God about to take over. Mm -hmm. Because remember, we're dead to self. We're dead to this life. John 12, 25 and 26. Look at that. Look at it right quick. We can wait come in. Y'all are still here. Amen. Look at John uh, uh, 12. Look at 25 and 26. Look what he says here. He says, praise God. He that loves his life. You see that? He that loves his life. What's going to happen? Lose it. You're going to lose it. What does that mean? You love it because you want to do what you want to do. That's right. See? This is one of the things that really handles a lot of believers today. We still some kind of way think we can fix stuff. It's not going to happen. He says, he that loves his life shall lose it. And he that hates his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. Mm -hmm. See that promise? That's the promise. Look at 26. If any man serve me, let him follow me, and where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. Now you want that to happen. Come on, man. See? Mm -hmm. When you start honoring the Lord, that's when the manifestations of your prayers, of your problems, will you begin to see the outcome. Lord, I've been praying for the longest time, and I'm hoping, hoping. No, just believe what God said. Just believe what he says. Amen? Listen, watch this, y'all. I want you all to get this. I want you to get this. Watch this. All sinners who try to do God's will will never be saved. i read it again. All sinners who try to do God's will will never be saved. See, saving comes when you realize that you, 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 you've been saved by him. A person who is drowning, you know, I mean, a drowning is, a, is probably one of the horrible things, a way to go. 
because you're losing your breath and you're right. going under and you're trying to, you know what I mean, and you're trying to make it. But all of a sudden, the lifeguard comes and swoops you out of the river. And now, they give you CPR, the water comes out, you, you're able to, you, you're alive. You see? But see, at that point, you knew it was over. <laughs> you knew your life was over, but then you got rescued. Yeah, so you got all, uh, uh, all your allegiance to this person who saved you. That's how Christ is. That's how we ought to be to him. Amen. He saved us from how we used to be. Now we know things that we wouldn't think about it, y'all. The stuff we know now, oh my goodness. If we, put, you say, if we knew it back then, we wouldn't do it. Probably so. We wouldn't have done it. But these things, that we was, it was, we was a natural man then. We couldn't understand the things spiritual. But now we can understand the things spiritual. When we look back the way we used to live, we say, how could we ever done that? It's because God's Spirit revealed it to us. So he wants to reveal more stuff to us to realize as we go forward in our life. There's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. Watch this. Mm. Amen. Oh, praise God. I'm, I think I, I said that already. I'll leave it alone. Where for a mouth, we should say, where for a mouth, some of us say, Lord, help me. But after we get finished prayer, we move ourselves back home and to ourselves. Lord, help me. But then we go right back into that little place where we're hoping something happens. No, no something's going to happen. Why? Because he, is, he has the ability to make it happen. Ain't nothing too hard for him. We got to know our Savior. We got to know who he is. Man, you, we, we are blessed people. We are blessed people. Listen, mm, praise God. Praise him. Oh, Lord, that must be. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to rush through this, y'all, because I had to look at these things and Think some of the things that was going through these notes. Look, I want you to look at this right quick. Um, uh, praise God. Mm. Where it talks about in, uh, uh, we got to receive all this by faith. Remember faith come by hearing? And hearing. Now, you ever notice when we say that, we can finish it? Why? Because it's in your, it's in your mind. Right? Faith come by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. It's amazing how we can remember these things, but it needs to get down in our spirit. We, we don't need head knowledge. Amen. We need heart knowledge. Amen. We need an open heart surgery. Yes. We really do. Because I can remember a lot of things, but it seems like when I'm going through in the midst of the storm, you know, these things don't come up. Why they don't come up? Because we got them in our head and don't have them in our heart. They ought to be in our heart. Amen? Amen? That's what they ought to be. Praise God. Now watch this. Mm. God is good. Yes, is. We got to believe the Word of God, y'all. We got to believe the Word of God. Amen? Amen? Whatever belongs to Christ becomes ours only through faith. Only through faith. Listen. I said this earlier. God cannot make us believe what we will not believe. Many don't have victories in their lives because they haven't realized Christ is their victory. Amen? He's our victory. The Bible tells us, Colossians chapter 1, verse 27. I'll read it to you. To them, them paraphrasing, them are believers. He says, to them, God has chosen to make known among the Gentiles the glorious riches of his mystery. Watch this. Which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. See, once you realize that Christ is in you, oh man, things begin to open up to you. Who has plans and visions and dreams and things you want to establish in your life? Amen. We a lot of times we, we look at these things and it's like our job or money is going to make things happen. We do this and we do that. Let me tell you something. God's timetable is totally different from the world's timetable. He can put people in your life, put money in your pocket, but do things that miraculously. Mm -hmm. If we just really realize and let him be God in us. Once we realize that, you realize that and you said you got a five-year plan. But God can make that thing happen in six months. Because you because he knows God's timetable is different. 
He knows when this is all over. He might not have five years on this planet. You know what I'm saying? we got to delight ourselves in Him. He said He will give us the desires of our heart. Watch. Oh, man, y'all y'all hear this? Let's close with this. Amen. we got to close with this. God is good. God is good. Hmm. God will allow things, I said this earlier, to remain in our life so as to convince us of our inabilities. That's why that, some of those things still hanging around. You just can't seem to get in that and understand it. Because He letting you know. You keep holding on to this thing. You ain't let go yet. You still got to stop. You still, I don't need you to hold on to that. Mm -hmm. Cast it, give it to me. Oh I, nobody cares for you like I do. I know you. I know you want to use your mother's womb. You and I don't even know the hairs on our head. Those that have hair on their head. Mm -hmm. Listen, John 4. Last two verses, John 4. John 4, look at 23. This is powerful. And I hope all this ties in to this message about letting go. Yet, have you let go yet? Look at 23. This is the woman at the well talking about she had, you know, Jesus said, you got five husbands. You know? And she's talking, she changed the subject right away. But look what he said here. But the hour comes, and now it is, when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeks such to worship him. That particular verse lets us know who's going to get in. Who's going to make it to glory. Those who worship him in spirit and truth. See, it's his Holy Spirit that's going to carry us through. It's no longer I who live, but Christ will live in me. That's that spirit. And that's how we worship him. Look at the next verse. God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. John 14, and then we're, home, we're done. 14, 17. Watch this. 14, 17. We there? Amen. He says... 16, stop in 16. He says, and I will, I will pray to Father, Jesus talking to his disciples. He said, give you another comforter, because he was talking about leaving them, right? He said, I'm going to prepare a place for you. Where am I going to be also? So he's telling them, John, this is John 14, 16. He's telling them, I'm going, I'm going to prepare a place, but I'm coming back. But while I'm going, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to ask the Father to give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Watch this. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither know of him. He said, but you know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. we got to know that he's in here. Yes. We have to know that he's, once we know that, man. Praise be to God. McFadden and Whitehead ain't got nothing on this. Amen. Ain't no stopping you now, man. You're going to be on the move. Thank you, Lord. Yes. I'm telling you, once we see this, anytime we come up with any kind of uh, 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 opposition from the enemy, mainly through thought, through our eye gates, we just got to say, Lord, you take control. Lord, you do it. Lord, I depend on you. I cast all my care. Lord, you take me through this thing. I can't fix it. I can't change it. You do it. And once you do that, oh my goodness, and leave it like that, mm -hmm. Lord have mercy. Mm -hmm. Oh, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. He said one more. <laughs> I got to go what he said. Mark 4. You ain't got to read it. I, I, I read it to you. Mark 4. Praise God. Amen. Look what he says. This is beautiful. This is giving you a little hint of actually how to plant this word in your heart. He says here in verse 20, um, Six, and he said, so is the kingdom of God. Now remember, the kingdom of God is within you. Watch this. It's in you. Now, the kingdom of God is within us, so the Bible tells us that we, uh, uh, you know, he said, thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. So we already have the kingdom in us. Now, we have to release the kingdom. We have to allow the kingdom to show us how to live 
Amen. He says, so, so is the kingdom of God as if a man shall cast seed into the ground. Now, the ground represents our heart, our spirit. And the seed is the word of God. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. Then he says, and look, listen, this is so beautiful. And should sleep and rise day and night. You know that's what he's telling you? When you believe God and plant his word in your heart, you can sleep day and night. In other words, that's saying you ain't got to worry. Because you sleeping day and night. You got folk getting in the bed, can't go to sleep because they're worried about the next day. But when you plant the seed, the word, in your heart, you can sleep day and night and nothing got to worry about it. Amen. And watch this. Listen. And he says, and the seed, the word, which you planted, should spring up and grow up, and he know not how. It ain't for us to know how. It ain't none of our business. It's God's business. Amen. In due season, you shall reap if you faint not. Yes, Lord. So when we ask God, God, you fix it. Here's a perfect example of a child when they was a small child. When you was, maybe some of you might experience it yourself. You didn't have any money. You didn't have anything to eat. All right? Nothing in the, in the cupboard. <laughs> you know, and you got three kids, and they're all hungry. And they all want something to eat. And they say, Mommy, I'm hungry. It's time for dinner. You can't tell them we don't have anything. Your whole focus is, okay, I got to go do something. I got I to gotta, I gotta do with the beans I got left and a little bit of bread I got left and a little bit of flour. I got to put something together for them to eat. And when they eat, they enjoy it. They don't know how or what kind of situation you was in. That was up to the mom. Amen. So, God, it's up to God when we trust him. I don't care how you do it. Just do it. <laughs> Just do it. You know, he's the one who performed the miracles. He's the one who's going to make a way out of nowhere. I just thank God for his word today. I just want us to realize this. Lord, it's, it's, we've been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, you know, I live, not yet I, but Christ who lives in me. And now the life that I live in this flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. That's how we're supposed to walk every day. You're going to be attacked. Your mind's going to be flooded with nonsense and demonic activity. But seek those things that are above. Keep that word in front of you. Keep it going in your, coming out of your mouth, going to your eyes, going to your ears. Guard your heart with all diligence. Because out of it flows the issues of life. God bless you. Amen. 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 God bless you.